Hi everybody, I hope you've had a lovely week and welcome to what is a special episode of Pajama School because today is potentially the last video that we're going to do together on here so I wanted to make it a bit special so I decided to have pink hair. Why not? If you're following along at home, maybe you could do something fun today, like maybe stay in your pyjamas for your learning or put on uh, a funky outfit or costume. That'd be super cool. Or maybe you could be like me and get your teddies involved and bring them to pyjama school. Anyway, I hope you've had a lovely week joining in. I just want to say a big thank you for everyone for following along. It's been really fun. Um, and I, I've loved seeing all of your stories and pictures and things like that and you getting in touch. It's been so nice. Before we start our learning today, I want to say a big hello and well done to Aaron, who has followed along really well and has, his writing has come on amazingly and his phonics and his maths and his science, he's getting really good at dinosaur knowledge. So well done, Aaron. Okay, I think we're ready to get on with our learning now. Should we get to it? Let's do it. So let's find the space and stretch up. Wiggle your fingers and stretch out. And let's stretch over to this way. And to the other way. Let's give your hands a shake. And let's do high knees. So kick your knees up in front of you like this. And let's do some star jumps. Five, four, three, two, one. Well done. Okay, if you've got one nearby, grab a toy or a teddy or a shoe. Something that doesn't matter if you drop it. I'm going to use a lemur. See if you can spin your thing and make it do a side flip like that. Woo! <laughs> Can you do it the other way? Well, Lima, you're a good flipper. Whoa. And a back flip. Whoa. And a front flip. Should we pass him round? Whatever you've got, whatever Teddy or thing, try and pass it round your body like that. You can pass it round your head if you want. Woo. Pass it around your knees. Can't see mine on the screen. Keep passing it around your knees. And what else should we do? Let's throw it and catch it from one hand to the other. Whoops, I need to practice this. Ah! <laughs> it's okay if, you just, if you're not perfect at it. The more we practice, the better we'll get. Ooh, you can even try it really quick. This is how you build up your skills to get better at catching and throwing. You just keep doing it over and over. If you're with someone else at home who can play with you, you can do throw and catch with them. Just be careful of any objects in your house that might suffer if you, if you hit, hit them with something. Okay, I think we're good to go now. Well done, guys. So for phonics today, we're going to do a kind of double session because I'd like to teach you one more sound and I'd like to do a little spelling quiz for our split digraphs and our phase five sounds we learned last week. So I'm going to write a secret word under here with our sound from last week and see if you can sound it out. Are you ready? T -er -oo. True. That means when something isn't false, it's the opposite of false. It means it's right or correct or not made up. It's true. That had our ooh, ooh, blue glue sound in from last week, didn't it? Okay, today's sound is A, W, which together make the or sound. And we remember that by doing this. I'll show you. So you can draw, oops, I've just rubbed that out a little bit. It's A, W. Hey, cheeky sound, where are you going? A, W. So you can draw somebody with their mouth wide open like that going, oh. Maybe covering their mouth with their hand or having a big stretch. Because the way we remember this is or, or, yawn at dawn. So at dawn means when the sun is just starting to rise. 
So it's, it's the, day, the start of the day is dawn. So it's yawn at dawn. Both of those words have the or sound in yawn at dawn. So if you're following along at home, you could try and draw the yawning person like that going Ooh, and maybe you could draw the sunshine to show yawn at dawn. I'm going to write some words underneath here for you to sound out now as well. So pause the video now and try to sound out these four words with the or sound in them. Okay, let's go through them. We've got oo, or, n, lawn. Lawn is another word for the grass that you might have uh, around your house. So you can call it a lawn where it's like a, it's usually a rectangular or a square patch of grass like this. Uh, fawn, f, awn. Does anyone know what a fawn is? It's a really cute thing. If you've seen the film Bambi, you might know. A fawn is a baby deer. A little baby one. So you could try and draw a baby deer. They usually have little spots on the back as well, like Bambi. It's a bit of a funny drawing. Oops. Uh, we've got this word, which is... Oh, this is really weird. This G is a ninja letter. It's silent. So try it without the G being there. It's just N, O, no. No means when you chew on something. So if you're gnawing on something, maybe if, you're, if you bite your nails, you could say that he was gnawing his nails. That's supposed to be some teeth. So uh, if you've ever heard of an animal called a beaver. Beavers like to gnaw on wood. So they make something called a dam, which goes across water. And they gnaw on the wood to make it the right shape and size so they can, so they can live around that dam. So we've got beavers. And then this one we've got F L A W F L O floor. This is a new word. It doesn't mean the floor that we walk on. That's spelled like this, isn't it? F with the O like in door. That's floor that we walk on. Floor like this means when something's perfect except for a problem. So, for example, if you had a really cool painting but it had a scratch on it you say that's a flaw it's got a flaw or if you come up with the best plan in the world but then there's something that goes wrong that there's a flaw in your plan it means when something goes a bit wrong okay so see if you can write your very own sentence using these or words or any that you can think of you could even draw pictures if it helps and when you've done that i'm going to give you a spellings quiz on this side and it will have some or sounds in okay so pause the video now and try that. So once you've done this all page, I'm going to cover it up digly, and we're going to try our spelling. So it's going to have all our phase five sounds from last week in it. Your first spelling, when you've written one to ten, if you need time to do that, you can pause it now. Your first spelling is the word tube. Tube. The hamster liked crawling through the tube. T-U-B. The next spelling, if you're not ready, you can pause the video. The next spelling is a name, so it needs something special at the start. The word is Pete. That could be a name, Pete, P-E-T. Pause the video. The next word is cake, cake. I'm going to make a cake. Pause the video if you're not ready. The next word is bake, b-ake. I'm going to bake something. I'm going to bake a cake. The next word is mine. So you can borrow that, but it is mine. Mine. Remember, these are all the split digraphs we learnt last week. The next one is a name and it's somebody wonderful in our class as well. Rose. R O's. Rose. Next, we've got the word glue. G -l -u, glue. Going to glue my picture in my book. Next, we have bird. Bird. The birds were the, the bird was tweeting at the window. Tweet, tweet, bird. 
This, these next two are actually new words, but they're using the sound we've learned today. The first one is claw, and that means like the kind of the talons or the things that animals have, the claws. Claw, claw. And the last one is draw, d -r -o, draw. I love to draw. Okay, I'll read those all through quickly again. If you need to pause the video or go back, please do. So it's tube, peat, cake, bake, mine, rose, glue, bird, claw and draw. Okay, I'm going to go through these now and write them on here. So if you haven't written them yet, pause the video. The first one was tube, which is T-U-B-E. One tick for spelt correctly. Double tick for beautiful letter join handwriting. The next word is peat, capital P, E, T, E, P, E, T, E. And there's the split E. So we've got the split U there, split E there. The next word is cake, C, A, K, E. Double tick. There's the split A. The next one we've got is mine, M, I, N, E. Oops. Tick for correct spelling, tick for letter join handwriting. Next, we've got rose, which is a name and a thing, isn't it? A flower rose. So we've got R-O-S-E with a split O. Glue, we've got G-L-U-E, glue. Next, we've got bird, B-I-R-D, bird. Then we've got claw, C-L-A-W, and finally we've got draw. Have I only done nine? Am I going loopy? Let me just count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Which word have I? I've missed the word bake. I'm very sorry. So all of these are one down. If you're looking for the word bake, I bet you noticed that straight away. B A K E. There you go. That's how we do bake. I must be half asleep or something. So then when you've done that, add up how many you've got right out of the 10 questions. So out of 10, let's write it as a fraction. So if you've got six right, you've got six out of 10. Or if you've got 10 right, you've got 10 out of 10. I'd love to see what you got. Or if not, just use it as a method for you to keep practicing and getting better and better. Which split digraph do you find the trickiest? Is it A, E, I, O or U? Have a think because there, there's usually one that we find harder than others for some reason. Well done with that, guys. Let's move on to our maths now. So you might remember in school, we've done uh, some learning about bee bots. Um, I've got here a little lemur bot instead. And I've got a grid that I've drawn here with the word start on it. So that's where our lemur bot will start. And we're going to try and send it on a little adventure to get somewhere. I've put on here the usual instructions that you see on a bee bot. Um, so they're the, these little robots that you can program to go forwards, backwards and to turn. Um, and they're really cool and they're great for getting to lo uh, learn how to use algorithms, which is a, a way of giving instructions for computers. So these are the kinds of instructions we can give to a bee bot or a lemur bot. And they, they are forward. So if you press the up arrow, it goes boop like that. If you press it twice, it goes boop, boop, two times. Backward is another instruction. So that just goes back like this, boop. If you press it two times, it'll go boop, boop. Then this one, we've got turn clockwise. So, you... so this one, we've got turn clockwise. So do you remember last, uh, I think it was last lesson or the one before, we looked at clocks and thought about how the second and the minute hand spins around those clocks. Uh, and that's called clockwise because it's the way that they go around the clock. Anti-clockwise was the other way around. So you can have two types of turns with our lemur, but you can turn clockwise like this. That was a quarter turn, wasn't it? Quarter turn. Or you can go anti-clockwise like that and they're a quarter turn like that so it just goes boop or boop depending on which sometimes they're called turn right or turn left because on b bots it is just right and left like that that's right and remember l for left that's left okay so i'm going to see if i can get from the start to here okay and i'm going to say this is i'm going to pretend it's gone to pajama land which is where my uh, country that I made up is. I'm going to pretend this is where the mountains are 
maybe I'll draw the forest down here. You can make your own map if you want, or you can just use mine, that's fine, and write the instructions for it. We did send out one uh, with this week's learning as well, if you want to use that. So that's the forest. Maybe I'll have a lake going in this one with a little bay on it. Uh, what else do we have? We can have a beach. So we'll draw a beach there with a little sun umbrella called a parasol. And then there's the sea going up to the beach. So we've got all these things. I want to get Lima bot to the mountains. So what instructions will I need to give my Lima to get from here all the way to there? So if I want it, I want it to go forward, don't I? Definitely. And it needs to go forward one square, two square, three squares, and then stop there. So I should press forward three times. So if I was to write down my instructions, I'll just rip off a piece of paper here. I'm going to write the instructions here. So we'd have forward three times like this. Forward, 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 like that. So if I go forward, forward, forward with my instructions, it will go like this. Forward, 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 like that. And it will stop in that square. Then, which way does it need to turn to be facing the mountains? Have a look there. Which one is it? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well done if you said clockwise. There we go. So the lemur's now facing that way. It doesn't make it go across like that. That's a, a really common mistake that lots of us make. We think that turn clockwise means it moves clock, moves across towards that side, but it doesn't. It just turns it. So you could just keep spinning for the days and days and days on the same square if you were just pressing that button. Okay, so we just need to press it once. So on, on my instructions, I want to turn clockwise. So I'll draw the arrow one of them like that and then i just need him to go forward once because remember we can't go sideways forwards is just the way that his face is pain is facing so he goes boop one forward so that would be the instructions forward 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 turn clockwise and then one more forward that would be the instructions to get from here to there forward 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 turn clockwise forward once more okay so I'm going to set you some challenges to try and do now. You can make your own little creature to go on the grid or you can just imagine Lima bot moving or you can make your own grid or you could just use your hand over the screen like this and just picture it like that. I'm going to ask you to get to different places on the map and you always have to start at this corner here. So can you tell me the instructions to get to the beach, to the lake and to the forest, all starting from here? You can try it the long way around if you want to. You don't have to go there the quickest way. It's up to you. But I want you to write down the instructions, just like I've done, to get to all these different places using this little Lima bot, okay? Good luck with that, guys. You can pause the video now to work it out. For English today, we're going to think about uh, the country that we designed. So remember, mine was pyjama land, wasn't it? So I'll read this to you again. In pyjama land, it is scorching hot. So people go to the beautiful beaches a lot. There are some treacherous mountains with freezing cold peaks. The climate is quite tropical because it is sunny and rainy. This means lots of gorgeous plants and flowers can grow. Okay, and do you remember we created a creature as well? So I had my uh, lemur creature with big wings and a dragon tail or a lizard tail. And we described it and wrote labels. Today, we're going to use all of those ideas to do something called a poster. Now, a poster is a thing that we put on the wall or sometimes you see them on the internet as well and it's to make somebody want to do something or to go somewhere so usually it uses big letters and bright colors and beautiful pictures and it uses words really really good words like good adjectives like amazing brilliant gorgeous it tries to get people to do something so we're going to make a poster to advertise our country. That means to try and make people want to go there. So I'm gonna do my best uh, bubble writing to write pajama land. And then you can come up with a subheading that maybe tells you a bit more about it. So pajama land, the most beautiful place on earth the most b e a beautiful place 
on earth. There we go, pajama land. So that already makes you go, ooh, I kind of want to go there. And I'm gonna draw a big sunshine as well because lots of, not everyone, but not everyone, but lots of people like the sunshine. So if I draw the sun and maybe give it some sunglasses so it looks super cool and a smile, people think, whoa, this place looks super cool. I really wanna go there. You could even do things like, you could use different colors. I don't have many colorful pens. I've just got my yellow here at the moment. Um, but maybe I'll use my yellow to uh, try and do an eye-catching thing. So you can, on posters as well, you might see zigzag things like this that really jump out of the page at you and make you go, wow. So in there, I could put something like, see the amazing creatures. And I'm using lots of exclamation marks as well, like, wow, wow, wow. So maybe I'll draw a, just the head of my creature from before that I drew there. <laughs> See the amazing creatures. Maybe your um, country has a certain type of food that everybody likes to eat. So you could do another bubble. This time I'm going to do a, a round bubble and I'm going to tell people, I'm going to tell people about the food that you can eat there. So maybe they have special kind of um, amazing kind of rainbow fish and chips or something like that. You know how we have normal fish and chips, they could have rainbow fish and chips or so, you know, something a bit unusual that would make people go, oh, I want to try that. Let's go there on holiday. So try are delicious d-e-l-i-c-i-o-u-s try our delicious rainbow fish and chips yeah you could even color it in rainbow colors uh, if you've got them at home then what else could we tell about it? You could even challenge people. So, I'm, you know, in my country, it's got these mountains that are quite dangerous and treacherous. You could say, challenge yourself to climb the mountain. Oops. Challenge. Challenge yourself to climb the treacherous mountains sometimes people like a scary challenge don't they like climbing a mountain or swimming across a huge lake or surfing on some huge waves so challenge yourself to climb the treacherous mountains and then maybe you could draw some tiny people climbing up the mountains there so can you see i've used my um, ideas about the the different things in the country to try and make it seem really exciting and I've used lots of really exciting adjectives like treacherous, amazing, delicious, beautiful. They're getting better and better and better and then I could even use the spare spaces on my piece of paper to draw some things like the, maybe the flowers that grow there and swirly vines coming off them. Uh, and then I could put other keywords. I could put tropical climate with maybe a cool glass of lemonade there with some ice in it and a straw. So all these things are making people think, wow, that looks like such a cool place I want to visit. And then you could put this up and try and get people to come to your country to visit. So I'll leave that with you. You can try and make your own one to do with your country and your ideas. I'd love to see them if you don't mind sharing. I hope you enjoy that challenge.
So for topic this week, what I've decided to do is create a quiz for you to try at home on a website called Kahoot. And I'm going to share it on Twitter as well. So it's going to have bits and bobs of learning that we've done over time. So you can have a try at it and see what you've remembered. And if there's something you haven't remembered, maybe you could have a little go at researching that in the half term. So this is probably going to be the last video that we're going to do for you in pyjama school so i hope you've had a lovely time joining in i've loved working with you and teaching you from here i hope you have a really nice half term and i will put the link below for the quiz if you want to join in with that bye everybody have a great time and i hope to see you soon bye